Welcome back to the PID Control with Arduino lecture series. In this lecture, I'll be demonstrating the PID controller using a self-stabilizing propeller arm system. The goal of this system is to regulate the angle of the arm by adjusting the thrust generated by the motor's propellers. The stronger the thrust, the larger the angle. In order to measure the angle, we'll use an accelerometer, or better known as an IMU. This will provide a feedback signal to the Arduino which will send the motor control signal to the electronic speed controller driving the motor. Here is the physical apparatus. This is the IMU which is installed in parallel with the arm. This IMU sends the acceleration and angle values to the Arduino through the I2C protocol. Here is the DC power supply which supplies the power to the brushless motors connected to the propeller. The motor gets the drive signal through the ESC from the Arduino Uno. Taking a look at the code, I've set the sample time to 10 milliseconds, or 100 hertz. The sample time should be at least 10 times faster than the time constant of the system. The time constant is a time that represents the speed a particular system takes to reach 63% of its final value. For example, if I provide a system with a step change in the input, the time it takes to reach 63% of the final value is the time constant. In the propeller system, I measure the time constant to be around 0.5 seconds, or 2 Hz. So the loop sample time should be at least 10 times faster, or in this case 20 Hz. But I set it to 100 Hz for the sake of keeping the system robust. Now let's see how the propeller system performs with the following PID gain constants. Now for this example, I've set my set point to 45 degrees. Now as you can see the system performs pretty well, but we can reduce the overshoots by turning up the derivative gain. But before we do that, I want to show you what happens if we lower the derivative gain. As you can see, our system is so underdamped that it's oscillating. This is why it's important to have the derivative term to dampen this oscillation. Let's increase the derivative gain to 0.811. We can see that it rejects disturbances a lot better, so overall I'm pleased with this performance. So I hope you guys enjoyed this demonstration. In the next lecture or the final video, I will show you how I arrived at these PID values. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the final lecture.